that you may be what? Perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means I'm coming out of this situation, I'm coming over, and on the other side, I'll be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Everything I believe for, every dream God's ever given me, it shall all come to pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and rejoice about it right now. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. This morning we're going to talk about joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. You know, um, we travel all the time, different churches. and um, So if you're at a church really just like uh, once a year, it would take you approximately three or four years to do a series. So it's not that you preach on the same thing all the time. It's just that it takes you a few years to cover the subject if you're only there once a year. Here twice a year, so we're in a series on joy in the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> a little different than being the pastor. You could do that like every week. Uh, but let's look at Romans 14, 17. We look at several scriptures on the importance, the purpose, the purpose, the importance of this joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Romans 14, 17, really Paul uh, says the kingdom of God and he says it is three things. He said you must understand righteousness, then you have peace, and then the last one he calls it joy in the Holy Ghost. And so this morning we're going to talk about the last one, which is the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, one of my favorite quotes comes from C.S. Lewis. And uh, he said, joy is the serious business of heaven. Amen. We'll try that one one more time. Joy <laughs> is the serious business of heaven. In other time, in uh, any time heaven is taking care of serious business, it will happen in an atmosphere of joy. So this morning, when you feel like you need to take care of some serious business, tell the person next to you, please excuse me. <laughs> but I'm fixing to break out in joy because I believe God is taking care of some serious business for me. Wouldn't do any good to worry about it. Come on, or struggle about it. But I believe the Holy Spirit can take care of that business supernaturally. And he'll do it in that atmosphere of joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, joy in the Holy Ghost is not what you'd call really just natural joy. It's a supernatural thing. I said it's a supernatural thing. This joy in the Holy Ghost is supernatural. And the you might consider that you really cannot get a sad Holy Ghost. I know some people kind of look like they did, but you cannot get a sad Holy Ghost. Even the anointing is called the oil of joy. And the Psalmist David said, I will be anointed with fresh oil. So some people just need an oil change. <laughs> problems of life and cares of life and things that are going on. But it says in Acts 13, 52, the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Actually, it says they were continually filled. So if you're in the early church in the book of Acts, it says all the real disciples of the Lord were so full of what? Joy. Yeah. Amen. I know we have so many theologians that have, we call them uh, deep sheep, that they're, they're, they're so deep. I mean, 
Uh, they're just, you just can't hardly find them. But uh, imagine <laughs> that the deeper you go in God, the happier you get. Yeah. All right, let's try it again. I said the, the deeper you go in God, come on, the greater joy you have actually. Amen. Amen. And so this joy, the disciples were continuing to fill with joy. What is the purpose of this joy? Well, first of all, it's a demonstration of the triumph of Christ. We'll try that one more time. I mean, the, the joy that you and I have is a demonstration of the resurrection of Christ, the triumph of Christ. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures for years is uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14, where Paul said, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. He always causes us to what? Triumph. triumph. So you know the word triumph there really is not someone fighting for victory. The word triumph there is literally a celebration after the victory. So you got to see if you're really still fighting for it or if you're celebrating after it. Are y'all still with me? In other words, are you still like struggling for the victory or do you see yourself in Christ, made alive with him, raised up with him, seated together with him, sharing his victory? So Paul said, we are always celebrating the triumph of Christ because his victory was our victory. So it says in uh, Colossians 3, uh, uh, 2, 15, it says that Jesus spoiled principality. Come on, we're talking about in his resurrection. Jesus did what? Spoiled principality, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it or through the cross. What Jesus did in his resurrection, when he was raised from the dead, he had a celebration, which some writers say he had a parade through downtown eternity. <laughs> and he exposed, in other words, it was a public display. He exposed Satan and all devils and demons as shattered, empty, and defeated. In other words, Satan is a defeated foe. Come on, and your celebration is a demonstration of that triumph. <laughs> Somebody said it this way years ago. They said, if you don't rejoice, the devil will think he's winning. <laughs> don't look around right now, but... If you know, the devil's not omnip omniscient. He don't know everything. He just got to throw trials at you and see how you act. So go look at James chapter one, verse two through four, and we'll see how we're supposed to act. In other words, your joy or your rejoicing is a demonstration that Satan is defeated. Victory is yours. Amen. So James chapter one, verse two through four says, when you're facing trials, and you're facing adversity and opposition. I heard Dad Hagen say it this way. He said, I do most of my rejoicing when I'm having the most difficult time. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. I, he, said, I, he said, I don't wait till it looks like everything's going good and then I get happy. He says, right in the middle of the trial is when I do my rejoicing and my shouting and my laughing. Right in the middle. So we have uh, these instructions from James, he says, and really it's just the Holy Spirit giving us instructions. And he says, count it all joy. You know, that's not the easiest thing to do sometimes. When you have different kinds of trials and adversity and uh, the words there just mean you're under pressure. You're under pressure. You're having challenges. He says, here's my instructions to you. Count it all joy. Count it what? All joy. That means you got more than one problem at, at the same time, and you're just going to count it all joy, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. What does patience mean? 
That means everything don't always turn around by Friday. <laughs> but you can outlast the devil. I said, you can outlast. So your joy, come on, will hold you steady when it looks like things are not changing. Even if failure is on all four corners. Boy, I feel like slapping somebody already this morning. I said, even if failure is on all four corners, come on, no matter how you feel or how things look, you say, this would be a good time for me just to have a joyful shout and a jump and a dance and a run and a praise. I'm going to count it all joy. Hallelujah. So when he says, count it all joy, knowing this, the trying your faith works patience, let's patience have its perfect work. That you may be what? Perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means I'm coming out of this situation, I'm coming over, and on the other side, I'll be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Everything I believe for, every dream God's ever given me, it shall all come to pass. So I'm going to go ahead and rejoice about it right now. I'm going to praise him right now. Amen. So he says, count it all joy. Well, I looked that up and... Um, and the, the word there, all joy, simply says, count it, maximum joy. In other words, do not, not some half effort to smile. Count it all joy. Apparently, your faith works best when your joy is on high. All right, so count it all joy, maximum joy. So I figured, well, there must be a minimum joy, and God's wanting you to turn yours up to maximum joy. So one joy, two joy, three joy, four joy, five joy, six joy, seven joy, and he said, I want you to hit 10 joy. Now, some of y'all, it's been a while since you hit 10 joy. And I'm telling you, if you hit 10 joy, <laughs> you're going to need the Holy Ghost to help you hit 10 joy. Because one joy, I kind of call that just like a smile. Some of y'all struggle with that. But just like one joy, just practice that. Just go. Oh, you're at one joy. Now, how are you going to get from one joy, come on, to ten joy? Come on, one joy, smiling. Two joy is really just laughing. Y'all should practice laughing a few minutes ago. Ha, ha, ha. And medical science actually tells us that your body cannot tell the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh. In other words, your body gets the same benefit just if you're just doing a fake laugh. We're going to call that a faith laugh. <laughs> Y'all try a faith laugh. Go, ha, ha. <laughs> Somebody says, I, I think that's just you doing that. That's exactly right. A faith laugh. Faith laugh. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so Smith Wigglesworth said, faith laughs at impossibility. <laughs> Come on, I want you to think about three things that look impossible right now. And do a faith laugh right now. Go, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Come on, MD Anderson Hospital, one of the best hospitals in the, in the world, actually have laughing classes for their patients. They're, they're not really Christian classes. They're just laughing classes. So people come from all over the world and they'll have the laughing class if you like to attend laughing class because the doctors have discovered that when you're happy, some of y'all need to get the worried look off of your face. When you're happy, amen, your heart, come on, your body, your lungs, amen, your immune system. Everything works better while you're laughing and while you're happy. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> 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 
and we're actually instructed to serve the Lord with gladness. Some people say, I'm here and I'm serving the Lord. I've been doing this for 40 years. He says, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Then I learned from Brother Copeland in Deuteronomy where it says, God said, these blessings were hindered or these curses came on you or the blessings were hindered because you did not serve the Lord with gladness. All right, let's try that one more time. In other words, you were there. Come on, they asked the guy, did you wake up grouchy this morning? He said, no, I just let her sleep. So uh, some people just kind of grouchy. Come on, surprise yourself and get happy in the morning. Surprise yourself and say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. So you know one of my favorite Psalms is Psalms 126. Psalms 126 says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Let's try that again. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like those that dream. They said it was like a dream coming to pass. One translation says it seemed too good to be true. How many like to have some dreams come to pass? Come on this year that you can say, seems too good to be true. I mean, come on, a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you would have said, wow, if that could happen. Well, let me tell you, it can happen. Yeah. Amen. It will happen. So it says, when the Lord turned again, means he turned things once and now he's turning it again. Yeah. All right, let's try this out over here. How many of you had the Lord turn something for you and you can remember when it turned? Uh, how many like to go ahead and mark your clock right now and say, I'm, I'm expecting something to turn here this morning. The Lord turned again. Come on, my health turned, my life turned, my family turned. Come on, my business turned, my finances turned. And the Lord turned it once. Now he's turning it again. He said, we were like those that dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter. You know what that means? That means I could not stop laughing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's good. Some of y'all can't start laughing, but he said, I could not <laughs> stop laughing. The Lord turned. In other words, man didn't do it. My education didn't do it. Come on, people didn't do it because I tried harder. That, I, that didn't happen. But when I yielded to the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit got involved in that situation and he turned my captivity and filled my mouth with life. Amen. We were like those that dream. It's like a dream coming to pass. How many of you ever had a dream come to pass? Yeah. How many believe God's got some more dreams coming to pass for you? So we were just laughing, ha, ha, ha. So a lot of times people see something like that in a Holy Ghost or a Pentecostal church where people are laughing and get full of joy. And they think it's kind of silly or it's kind of cute. They go, that's cute. But the Lord told me, he said, if you only knew what happens in the spirit, when you rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. Let's try that again. He said, if you only knew what happened in the spirit. Hey, if you only knew what happens in the spirit, when you rejoice. Hey, you only knew what happened. <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, look at somebody and say, excuse me, I need to take care of some business right now. I've got to take care of some business. I want to let the devil know he's not winning. I want to let God know that I have faith in his goodness and his mercy. I want to rejoice. I rejoice. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's see if we can get past, get from two joy. Some of y'all hadn't made it to two joy yet. I don't know. <laughs> when you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need a comedian. Yeah. I, I said, when you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need a comedian to be happy. You can just start laughing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One joy, smiling. Come on. Two joy, laughing. Now, you know, I went to uh, 15 years of Dad Hagen Holy Ghost meeting. You know, he taught on faith and uh, for years, faith, who you are in Christ, redemption, the blood, very thankful. But the last 15 years of his life, he said, the Lord told him, I want you to do some Holy Ghost meetings. And uh, he said, because there's a move of the Holy Spirit that'll be lost to this generation unless we are taught. He said, I do realize that every church does not want these kind of meetings. He called it the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, a lot of times churches say we want the Holy Spirit. They just don't want him to demonstrate. Uh, I think they got the Holy Ghost kind of tied up and gagged in the basement somewhere. Because if he ever gets loose, it's just, it's just, <laughs> if you ever let the Holy Ghost loose, he's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. You ever let him loose, amen. Woo! <laughs> and so he's, he's a, a genius. He knows how to win your case. He's never lost a case if he can get his client to listen to him. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, you couldn't receive this from some people, but you could from Brother Hagin because he's a father, taught on faith so much. But he said, I think some people got the idea that all they need to do is believe a few scriptures and confess a few scriptures and everything will be all right. And then he said, no, we must have the Holy Spirit. Yes. We must have the Holy Ghost. Yes. I said we must have the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the Holy Ghost starts working, moving, yes. you yield to him. Amen. He's going to tell you in the time of challenge, count it all joy. One joy, smile. Two joy, start laughing. Three joy, start shouting. Come on. Four joy. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to know how to have victory in every area of your life? Do you want to learn how to rejoice no matter the circumstances you are going through? The Lord spoke these words to Pastor Mark Hankins. If you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice, you would rejoice every day. In the secret power of joy, Mark and Trennis shows believers how to bring the heavenly atmosphere of joy into the reality of their daily lives. You will see the relationship between the blood of Jesus and joy in the Holy Spirit. You also get as a bonus the four CD set, Faith Laughs at Impossibilities. In these messages, you will learn, I love to laugh, Faith Laughs at Impossibilities, The Shout of Joy, and supernatural joy. Joy is the bridge between believing and receiving. 
be the one who is quick to believe him and respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and rejoice. Watch God turn your life around. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. When you sow into someone's need, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dream, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the Secret Power of Joy book and the 4CD set, Faith Laughs at Impossibilities. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you for joining us for the program. We trust your joy was strengthened as you receive the word today. We would like to offer my parents' book, The Secret Power of Joy. Joy not only is our strength, it is one of the great secrets of faith. It is the bridge from believing to receiving. In this book, we learn from my parents that faith laughs in the face of impossibilities. It laughs in the face of bad reports. It laughs in the face of lack and shame, failure and defeat. Joy gives us enduring power till we see the end of our faith. When you truly believe God, you can get happy knowing that God is able to perform everything that He has promised. You can go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen and we will send this book to you for your gift of any amount. We want to thank all those who have partnered with us and helped us spread the gospel of Christ further and faster than ever before. Your partnership helps my parents to go to many nations around the world. It's because of you that we're able to continue to reach more people and ignite the spirit of faith to people around the world. If you're not currently a partner with Mark Hankins Ministries, we would ask that you prayerfully consider joining with us. Please go over to markhankins.org where you can find all of our resources, upcoming meetings, you can give, read current newsletters from my parents. If you've not downloaded the MHM app on your phone, you are missing out. On the app, you have access to daily devotions, free sermon downloads, the podcast, the TV broadcast, and you can even watch our conferences live right there on the app. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.